Hello, my name is Andrej Melik, and I'm a chief architect at Super Awesome. And I will be telling you our platform story, how we went from not being able to manage or provision any amount of cloud resources to fully automated provisioning with Terraform and Terraform Enterprise. I will be available at the Platform Story Slack channel for questions after this talk. In Super Awesome, I'm part of the infrastructure platform team. And our mission is to provide training and tooling to enable super awesome engineers of all experiences, levels, to provision and run infrastructure independently, quickly, and easily in a consistent, scalable, and secure manner. To summarize it, what we're trying to do is really make life easy for our developers and development teams to enable them with good automation with as least friction points as possible. First task we wanted to approach as part of this team is to enable teams to provision and manage their cloud resources. And we decided that most likely the way we're gonna build it is to have the, this following setup where uh, we will have um, all the resources provisioned uh, via as infrastructure as a code, Terraform or something similar. We will execute it on a remote server that will orchestrate and provision the needed resources. We wanted to achieve that the cloud resources will be provisioned as infrastructure as a code, something like Terraform or similar as I already mentioned. We want it to be self-sufficient so the platform teams won't be part of the daily execution when teams need to maintain their uh, resources, change or, mute, or um, delete them or update them or create them. So it's fully self-service. And we want to make it as easy as possible without much friction with a unified approach. So what we did to solve this problem is that we decided that the best way to do it is to create our own version of Terraform. It's semi-Terraform, I would say. So what we did is we created a small and curated small set of resources that we're going to be operating on. So few opinionated setups. The company was small. And we didn't really need all that sea of different uh, services, databases, and solutions that were available at the time in AWS. And what we did is we created an abstraction layer on top of Terraform. And it was using YAML files as a template. So eventually, in order to provision a single resource, you would just have to have a snippet of a YAML file. And then it will be translated to Terraform which will then eventually you would be able to run and provision cloud resources. So we ended up having our own implementation using Golang templates. We assume it will be easy than using just plain vanilla Terraform as Terraform at the time was quite scary and um, quite hard to, to get the knowledge. At, the, at that time, when we approached this problem, Terraform had quite some drawbacks that we tried to fill. And by having this small curated subset, we said, okay, it's going to be very easy to use because you only will have to use a few lines of code that we will then take all the hassle of, of the rest of the settings that you will need to um, try to understand. But as we all know, the streets of hell are paved with good intentions. So all those good intentions of trying to make life easy actually backfire on us. What we actually built is that First, you will have to add some YAML file, a piece of code, right? A piece of few lines of YAML that seems to be trivial. Then you will have to run some scripts to get the Terraform files that you will eventually run to provision your infrastructure. We all started with a remote server, which we're running as part of our CI and Circle CI. But over time, we couldn't really keep up with the amount of state we had to feed into the scripts and the execution pivoted to be mostly local. After you generated those Terraform files, you will have to run more scripts to create your resources. Then more scripts to run locally and generate them and then provision your stuff. So what actually resulted is that it was far away from being um, self-service. It was far away from being simple and not complex. And in some times we even didn't have the code in the version control. We had to go back and do a reality check. So uh, to answer a simple question, did we really do a good job? And unfortunately not. 
the feedback wasn't that great. It was a very low user engagement. So system ended up being, over, being um, overly complicated. Users failed to provision uh, the resources using that uh, pipeline, these flows, and defaulted mostly to manual uh, creation of and provisioning. The abstraction, abstraction layer that we built were um, very limiting because as, as the company grew, we couldn't really keep up and piling up more and more resources that we would be able to uh, provision through those YAML snippets. And due to all these factors, the provision time also was quite high because then you had to make sure that all those scripts are running and run quite significant amount of scripts in order to create a single resource. But we took all that feedbacks and we said, okay, yeah, we, we understand that where we failed and what we need to do to get better. We went back to the drawing board, gathering all the feedbacks and looking at the picture. We said, okay, we probably need to approach it with a new plan. So we had to revert and understand, okay, so what are the problems we're trying to solve? And what are the goals? So we decided that on a new, based on the feedback, we needed a new plan. We wanted to increase our developer productivity. Our existing model couldn't scale well because um, of various factors that I mentioned. And obviously the, the bandwidth uh, to, to maintain and backport any new resources that we needed to provision through our custom solution. We wanted to enable teams to be fully self-service. We want to allow them to be using any amount of resources that are supported through Terraform. And we want them to be able to use the most common tooling. So we don't need to be with, uh, working with some custom tools that only our team can maintain and support. We had to define new goals. And new goals were quite simple. First one is to simplify the most or most significant issue with our current setup was is that it was too complex. So we wanted to tackle that one. The second one is to actually to gain back the confidence of using this tooling and automated provisioning as to drive adoption. We define new milestones. The milestones were that we wanted to get rid of all that stuff that we built. We wanted to backport everything and just use plain vanilla Terraform. So we had to backport all the state to Terraform. We wanted to migrate all of our scripts and all those custom YAMLs to use plain vanilla Terraform. We decided that the best way to achieve it would be by uh, deploying Terraform Enterprise. They helped us a lot with Terraform trainings. Our teams were running trainings across all the engineering teams within small groups. And lastly, as we came up with more and more self-service capabilities, we also introduced some safety nets as guardrails. And that would, could be achieved by using uh, one of the Terraform Enterprise features such as Sentinel, which allowed us to crave policies to alert or block execution of risky configurations or uh, provisioning of resources that we don't want to uh, allow within our systems as it can be a security risk, scalability, or any other issues that we can decide that might be needed, needing our attention. In order to achieve it, we wanted to build, we decided to build the following um, system. So the user or developer will just code the plain vanilla Terraform, no more custom languages or YAMLs. Once it's all has been committed, we go and all the code will be committed to GitHub to allow team collaboration, such as code reviews and uh, all other things that you can get as part of workflow. Once the code will be merged and approved, it will be executed via remote execution on te by Terraform Enterprise Server and provision the needed cloud resources. And the main benefit going this way is to really enable self-service, reduce the needs for running local environments as the execution all came up through a Terraform Enterprise. And obviously we simplify the whole flow because we make it quite straightforward. The project plan to achieve it was as following. We wanted to unlock the value and unify the single approach as soon as possible. And 
the way we're going to go about it is that we don't want to have a situation when we have two ways to provision the resources while we're trying to spin up this effort. So we, we decided that we will port everything as soon as possible into this way to unify the approach. So we will have only one way to provision our resources. We added value through creating Terraform modules, such as private modules that reduce duplications. And we created out this common setup and opinionated setups to help people provision their resources with least, less repetition and uh, provide most common resources via modules. And lastly, the final uh, bit in this project was is to introduce those Sentinel policies that would act as safety net and alert people on risky configuration or risky resource provisioning. Our new pipeline looked as follows. So from going over complicated, running multiple scripts, now we have quite straightforward flow where a user developer will just raise a pull request with all of his uh, plan Terraform that we want to apply. Terraform Enterprise will run a speculative plan, which means that it will outline all the changes that are about to happen as part of this uh, pull request, but it yet will just outline it won't apply them. It will allow collaboration through pull requests and default mechanisms we might decide to choose adopting as a team. Our team will have few reviewers on, on each uh, provisioning. Once the, everybody happy, it will be merged. A final planning will be happening, which means that it will outline the changes coming out out of the main branch. Once the final planning happened and you're happy with these resources to be applied or provisioned, you can hit apply, and then it will be ex all executed through Terraform Enterprise Server. So to summarize our efforts and to measure our success, we went from running resource provisioning on substandard um, time, which probably sometimes it could take two hours, three hours, multiple support interactions, scripts sometimes work, sometimes didn't work, to enable most of the team and provision most of the resources within minutes. So there is no more friction in the process itself. Our adoption really from going off from probably few people and members within all the teams may even being able to run the scripts and provision the resources as infrastructure as a code to be enabling 100% of our, all of our team members, members to use the new system. So this is done through trainings and, uh, and uh, various other activities and templates that we provided them. And the last one is to really to see the success was is that can we measure the amount of resources created as infrastructure as a code. Before we were way below 50%, most of the resources was defaulted to be provisioned manually. Now we can see that since the rollout of this new system, we can see that over 90% of our cloud resources are provisioned as infrastructure as a code using the new pipeline, the new workflows. Thank you so much for listening. And I will be available at the Platform Story Slack channel for further questions. Thank you.